Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to do another speedometer rebuild. This time it's the newer style speedometer. Um, I think it's around 68 and up, maybe 70 and up. Uh, this one's got the integrated fuel gauge, um, whereas the old ones was only a speedometer and you had the fuel gauge beside it. So we're going to take apart this speedometer. We're going to give it a small overhaul. And since this is not the original speedometer to the car, we're going to reset the uh, the odometer to zero. Uh, we're going to try and do that. Um, this one, the needle's already been painted, uh, kind of um, a fluorescent orange or something to match uh, another gauge going into the car. So we're going to take this apart. I'll show you the steps, and then uh, we'll try and figure out as we go along, try and give it a good tune-up, ensure years of service. So let's get started. Welcome to Wolfhouse Motor Works. Okay, so on this style of speedometer, you've got a couple of different parts to it. So we've obviously got the glass in the front with the trim ring around it, which we're going to have to separate from the housing. When we turn it around, when it's out of the car, we have a lower section here for some warning lights. We also have the uh, illumination uh, lights back here some of them are still in here these ones are removed um, when you look in the front uh, you'll see there's one lamp over here for the high beam indicator uh, these ones are just the backlight uh, for the nighttime illumination you've got the fuel vibrator over here which will get unscrewed and taken apart and then you've got the plastic section up here which is the back of the fuel uh, gauge unit so we're gonna start by popping off the trim ring over here which will bring with it the glass, a rubber seal and then another trim inside. So let's try and separate that. I've This trim here is already loosened up but if it's not you may just need to get a little screwdriver and pry up gently around the, uh, the, um, the trim over here work your way around. Once that's loosened up you'll be able to separate it. Okay, so once it's separated, on the glass part, you're going to notice okay, this whole assembly comes out. In the back, you've got this trim. We'll pop it out a little bit here. You've got this little metal trim, which we're going to give it another coat of, of flat black before we put it back in. And then on these models, you can pop out the glass gently. You don't want to rip it. There's a little rubber uh, gasket type of situation holding it in. So just work your way around. And eventually it'll separate out of the trim ring. So you've got the trim, you've got the rubber, which has the flat part here and there. So you can remove the glass from the rubber and then you're left with the glass. So these are your parts for the front of the uh, face. Now we're going to put these aside for now and then get to work on taking apart the rest of the speedometer. So first thing, you can remove any leftover lights you may have, like so, they just pull out, so we'll set those aside. And then the next thing we can do is we can remove the fuel vibrator. So we'll just loosen up the screw back here. No. Okay. Take that out. We'll set that aside into a container. And then on this one, if you can see, there's a little nut back here holding it on. I've started to loosen it. So we're going to finish loosening that. It's not how we're going to put it back to make it easier if it's we need to change the fuel vibrator in the future, that's a pain in the ass, so we'll put that nut to the side 
We'll put the fuel vibrator to the side. Now, the next thing we can do is we could remove the fuel gauge over here by undoing this screw and this screw here. Try not to, as you're taking it apart, even though you're gonna, you may be rebuilding it, cleaning it up, doing things to it, try not to put your fingers too much on the front of the, uh, of the gauge face, just in case it's um, been damaged by sun or whatnot. You don't want to dirty it or stain it or do anything like that. It'll be hard to, uh, to fix after. So we're taking out the second screw over here for the fuel sender. Uh, not the fuel sender, the uh, fuel gauge, sorry. Take that out. And then we can pull out the fuel gauge from the, uh, the assembly. Afterwards we'll be able to remove this nut over here and separate the fuel uh, gauge from the plastic if we want to. We'll see later on if, uh, if it's necessary. So we'll set that aside. Now, what do we have left? We have the front of the gauge over here. We have the dial um, with the odometer and the speedometer. The next step, we're going to take out these two screws over here. And we should be almost ready to remove the dial. Okay, so we got those two screws out. Set those aside. Now, a little different from the older style ones, at this point um, you're able to get out the assembly uh, much easier than the older style ones which have a tube here for one of the lamps um, in the gauge. So now we've separated the actual mechanism for the speedometer from the housing. Um, this housing has been already painted, um, so usually they're a bare metal type of color. Um, afterwards, what we're going to do uh, as we progress uh, prior to reassembly, I'm going to cut new acetates, which is just these colored plastics in here, since these ones are all completely faded out. And then we'll replace those before we reassemble. Um, these parts just pull out, and then we can put new plastics, but I'll show you that when we get there. So we can set this piece aside. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to disassemble the actual speedometer mechanism back here and see what we can do as far as an overhaul uh, on this part. Okay, so now I'm going to remove, try and remove that back housing, the back half over here. Um, as opposed to the older speedometers, this one is screwed in, so I've taken one out. Um, we're going to take out this other flathead right down there. So let's take that one out and see if it separates. If not, we may need to take the mechanism apart first, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so now we've separated the two halves. This one now has retained this gear over here. We'll deal with that after. And this half is the drive where your speedometer cable goes in over here and then drives the gear, which then drives this magnetic section here to then spin the needle on your speedometer. So let's put these two screws aside and move on to disassembling this part a little bit more. Okay, so the next piece we're going to take off is going to be this little guy over here so that we can get this drive gear out. So I should just take a pair of pliers, grab it firmly and then just twist it out like so. And that comes out. And then we can usually pop this gear out like so and afterwards we'll be able to start removing this screw over here to remove this cover which covers the magnet which makes your needle spin 
So we'll take that screw out. All right. With the assembly. There we go. Which leaves us with this. Now, you can get to see a little bit how this all comes together. Um, next thing we're going to try and do separate this guy out because I want to try and get this drive mechanism out so because what we want to do is we want to make sure that this section in here um, isn't scored or is greased up enough because most of the speedometers when they seize up this is the point in here that this inner piece seizes up to the outer section uh, of this of this housing so we're going to try and remove this over here to inspect this inner shaft and then reassemble it with some fresh grease and then start going backwards. I'm going to try and take this apart. We'll come back to you in a second. Okay, so now to remove this part, because we're going to have to remove this magnetic part, you can see the screwdriver sticks to it. We're going to remove this magnetic part here to be able to get this drive shaft out and how we're going to do that is going to be by taking a screwdriver and we're going to gently pry under here okay gently going under and then you you pry a little bit until you feel it start start popping up just like so and then it comes off the shaft okay there's no clips or anything holding it on it's just pressed on so we'll set that aside now this is magnetic so try and keep it somewhere clean and then we're left with this assembly here okay as you can see so now we're gonna try and go on to the next step and we're going to try and release that shaft. This part is like a retention for that shaft. So we're going to try and get this metal clip off. And actually, you can see that this metal retention here is held on from back here. So we're going to undo those tabs and then pop that out. So usually a pair of long nose is the best thing for that and the way that these tabs work is they're just bent so you want to bring them back straight to line up with the hole so it can pop out and then same thing on the other side so that it can come out. So we're gonna bend these out and we'll come and show you the piece out. Okay, so um, off camera I kind of wiggled the two little tabs that were back here. Okay, you straighten them out. Now you can see the hole, so you want to have the tab straightened out to be in line with the hole. When you get it, you'll see that the tab has been twisted so that it locks itself into that hole. So now, once I've straightened those two tabs out using um, you know different kinds of long nose pliers so you can get in there what you want to do then is I put a little screwdriver under and I pried it up so now you can see the retainer that was crimped in there is now coming up okay and then we're gonna unlock it from the from the shaft so this is where we just straighten these little tabs out over here Okay, and when it's in place on the speedometer, it goes like that on the shaft and in. So we'll set that aside. And now the shaft, the drive shaft is out. And then we can clean up this assembly and make sure that we grease up this uh, this drive shaft properly clean it all up and then we're gonna go and take a look next at the odometer so we're gonna clean this up prep it and then 
take a look at the odometer. Okay, so I was able to get the little gears out that uh, spin the odometer. The way I did that was I pulled on the end of the uh, of the shaft here on the side with a pair of pliers gently, slowly pulling it back and then taking out one gear at a time. And now I've spun the odometer back to about zero and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the gears one by one. When I took them out I noted the order that they were in in case it makes a difference and also the direction that they were in. So I'm going to set those gears back into here one by one and slowly push, pushing this little shaft back in and then I'll show you the result after that. Okay so I was able to get this back in it's really just a, a game of patience you wanna line up your numbers to whatever mileage you wanna put back if you've swapped odometers or speedometers and you wanna put the accurate mileage you would key in so that you see the correct mileage in front and then what you're gonna to wanna to do is it's a bit hard to see on here but the gears here need to be lined up and you put them on uh, as you push this shaft back in you put one gear make sure everything's aligned you put another gear make sure everything's aligned play around with it try and set the gear in at the same same point so that you're not fighting the gears trying to locate themselves and you make it all the way to the end and then what you'll find is that your your shaft may be off center which means one of your gears are not meshing properly with the speed with the uh, odometer uh, wheels so you want to try and get all of that lined up and then the shaft should just poke out the side here and then you take a little pliers and you pull it through so that the two sides are about even uh, on that so that'll give you uh, whatever odometer reading you want to put back on there so now the next thing we're going to do since this is done is we're going to move on to reassemble um, all the mechanism that runs this and we'll give it a quick test and see uh, how it runs. Alright, so we're going to reassemble the gear uh, back into the housing. I've gone and cleaned up the uh, shaft over here. Um, and now we're going to uh, start to add uh, grease and start putting everything back together. So let's do that. This part may get a little bit messy, but you want to have um, more grease than not on here. And then you could always wipe it off after if you need to. I'm going to pass it in from the bottom here. And then we'll see how we do. And what I'll do is I'll add a bit more grease into it just to be sure we're not going to have any problems in the future from seizing and so forth. And then this time I'll put it back in from the top. Hopefully we have enough lubrication everywhere. Wipe off the excess and then I'll put some on that gear a little bit. Now at this point what you can also do is if you've got a broken speedometer cable you can get the end off of it and then you can set that into here and then I'll spin it a bit just to make sure everything is greased up and everything's set in. Everything's running smooth. All right. So we've got a good amount of grease. Should be good. Clean up whatever mess there is. For now, try and keep it as clean as possible. You can always go in there with a little, a little brush after and add a bit of grease before your final assembly. And then, now, we'll move on and put that retaining clip into here. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the retaining clip we took off before. That's gonna that's gonna go into the little groove that's on the shaft over here. We're gonna put it in this direction. Push the shaft out a little bit to help you set it in place. Just a small just a small tip before you install the lock piece for the shaft. Make sure that you've straightened out these ends and that they're pretty much on a on a 90 degree to be able to fit it in nicely. So do that first. And then an easy way to get it on is you would hold it facing this way, put it into the groove of the uh, shaft, and then if you pull the shaft up a little bit, you can spin it and then set it down, line it up with the holes, and push it through after. Okay, so now that you've got the retaining uh, section here holding that, that uh, drive shaft in, you want to make sure that it's pushed all the way down so it's firmly against the body of the mechanism here. And then we're going to flip it over and where we undid these two points, we're going to take uh, any kind of plier, needle nose, whatever you can get in there and then we're going to give it a quarter turn. So I would go in here holding the other side so it doesn't move and then I would give it a turn. In my case I'll use a bigger plier. So just like so and then turn just like so and turn. You don't need to go a lot it's gonna hold and there you have it. Now this guy is locked in he's not going anywhere okay now we move on to the next step. We're going to put back the uh, the magnetic wheel and then put the cover on. I'll get my uh, stuff cleaned up and we're going to put that together. Okay, now we're going to take our, make sure that your hands are clean, never hurts. And then we're going to now <coughs> take the magnetic wheel and press it back on to our drive shaft. So what you're just going to do, obviously this side goes down. We're going to put it on the shaft. I'll give it a bit of support from behind. Using two fingers you're going to just press it on till it bottoms out like so. Just make sure it's on there nice and firm so we're good with the magnetic wheel now <clears throat> and then similar to the disassembly uh, we're gonna now put this piece back on over here okay so <clears throat> now we're gonna put a little bit of extra grease in here we're gonna set this gear back in <clears throat> the side with the gears going straight across is the side that goes in towards that drive shaft on this. We're going to press it in gently and then you just need to locate the hole on the other side for the pin at the end of that to go into. Now we're just going to press in this little brass bushing. You've got another nub on the other end of the gear. We just line up the bushing with that and then just by hand you can press it in, make sure it's all the way in, you'll see there's no gap around the edge of the bushing. And then this assembly is now complete. The next step is going to be to join that with the speedometer now. Okay, so now <clears throat> when you're getting ready to join the two halves together, there's two things you need to consider. First thing, you're going to have to uh, reinstall this gear here or the other way of doing it is you could remove this or not install this just yet not install the drive gear in here and then do these two gears once this is all assembled to the face I'm gonna try and do it this way and over here if you can see this point here is a receiving end for 
the middle of the speedometer here. It's like a little point sticking out for the for the needle shaft. So you have to join the two and move the needle around a little bit from the other end gently, make sure your hands are clean, to get the center of this tip to ride on that uh, on that area on the other half. So I'm gonna uh, install these two halves together and then come back and show you the result. Okay, so <clears throat> the two halves are joined. Um, a little trick to help you um, put it together. Before you start putting everything uh, in final, um, make sure you fit this gear into the lower section here and then it'll line up approximate with the top half. So you wanna have this in towards the bottom. And then you have to also remember that this piece is indexed. So there's little tabs that, that orient this with regards to the speedometer. So you wanna be in that zone. And then what I found that was easier is when you're mating the two together, you hold the speedometer straight like this, and then you will gently hold the needle and you'll see when it's apart that there's a little bit of in and out slack. So you'll push it in a little bit as you try and find the center of the receiver on this side. And once you do that, you'll notice that your needle will now float a lot better. Whereas if it's off, it'll feel like something is, is, is resisting and your needle will just stay stuck if you, if you touch it like that, it just won't move. So when it's floating like this, you'll see that it's it's uh, on that center pivot point and that's how it should be so I've reinstalled the two screws that hold the back part in we have the gear over here you can add a little bit of grease in here if you like and then now we can do a test run of the speedometer to see uh, how well it's working and then proceed to uh, get the uh, back half prepared alright so now we're gonna give it a test run um, I have my tool on my drill just to see, make sure everything is running properly before we put it together uh, further. So we've got that over here. And then what we want to make sure is we're watching that the speedometer needle responds well and that the uh, odometer is spinning well. So. Now we see the odometer is creeping up on three. And everything seems to be working well now. Four. And there you go. So now we move on to the next step. All right, so now we're moving on to rehabbing the housing um, before we put everything back together. Um, on the housing, we've, uh, we've painted, uh, cleaned and painted this one. Uh, the color is uh, really up to you. You can choose to remove this plastic part over here. Um, we taped off these sections here because these are for the lights. You can paint them from the outside, but the inside don't get any paint on them because they're the ground for the for the light itself. Um, that goes in here, so you have a, the positive, and then the body is the ground for the bulb. And then, so what we're going to do now is I've removed the... Um, people call it the gels or whatever you want. This is what's behind the, the um, gauge which tells you the turn signal and a generator warning, a high beam and oil pressure warning lights. So this would be right back here on the uh, gauge. Okay, so what I've done now is I've removed the old uh, colored little um, plastic pieces from the factory. As you can see, the uh, age is worn through them. And trying to make new ones, you can use um, that those acetate papers and you can get a, a hole punch like this and then make, make a perfect round. You can also try and trim uh, one that follows the shape of the original. But the issue is trying to get them back into these uh, rubber holders, um, they're a little bit aged, they can crack easily. So what I prefer doing is I put these back just for um, 
the distance just to keep everything there because it, it butts up against the gauge. And what I do is similar to on the older style ones, I'll cut pieces and put them right in the back like that. What I'll use is either like a, a stronger kind of like a clear tape or you can get like a clear two-sided tape which uh, I like using because it allows you to layer these colored uh, acetate papers if you wanted to make it darker. Uh, some of them are relatively light and then fairly transparent so if you put two three layers together it'll give you a darker uh, appearance. So now you can see the blue, the two red at the bottom and the green for the turn signal. So that's done. The next thing uh, that I did in preparation for closing it up, we drilled a hole and added a grommet over here um, because on this housing we're going to add uh, an LED strip to uh, have better night visibility on this gauge. So um, you can also get yourself a, a grommet kit, it's always handy to have, or you can find a grommet that fits. Um, so now the next step is going to be that all this is prepared, we're able to now uh, start assembling the gauge back into the housing for the last time, and then we're going to fit the uh, LED strip uh, as well, and uh, we still need to paint this trim ring before we put it back in. So when we'll come back, I'll have the uh, gauge together with the, um, with the lighting all ready to go. All right, so I've assembled the, uh, the mechanism or the gauge into the housing. Um, what I did, so you see the grommet that I put previously uh, right here for a wire coming out for the LED lighting. Um, when you bring the gauge face or the gauge mechanism assembly in, you're going to have to play with it a little bit so that the uh, drive gear here clears this hole. Um, what I found to help a little bit, of course I've got the LED strip in the way, but if you loosen these two screws with maybe a half turn or quarter turn, it'll let you wiggle the faceplate a little bit to give you just a little bit of wiggle room so the mechanism can, can drop in easier through the hole here because it tends to get hung up on the casing up here. Once you get it in, you want to make sure that this little shouldered section comes through properly and then you tighten the two screws back here to hold it in. The next thing we're going to do now uh, is if you want to add the LED lighting you're going to want to do that uh, either now or right before. Um, I found it easier to run the wire inside the housing and just have the strip hanging out. Once the, face, uh, once the gauge was inside the housing then I, I uh, peeled the double side backing of the LED strip and put it evenly all the way around so that um, the idea for this LED strip in this case is that if we're going to have the metal trim part over on the gauge like that you won't see the, uh, the LEDs assembled however you will see it light up which I'll show you at the end so that's, that's pretty much the assembly here the only thing left now to whoops, the only thing left now to put in is going to be the fuel gauge. Um, here just had a bit of cleaning. We've painted the needles on this one as well to match. Fuel gauge is very simple. In order to install it, we're just going to flip the gauge around. Then the fuel sending unit will then drop in to the back of the housing here just like so and then we'll put the two flathead screws to hold it here and then it'll look something like that once it's installed so I'm gonna screw in the fuel uh, gauge section and then we're gonna move on to assembling the bezel with the glass okay so now we've got the fuel uh, gauge bolted in the next thing we're gonna do is gonna be um, you may want to clean up some of the contacts here, the hardware, uh, things like that. It's most likely corroded uh, given the age of these things. Um, I've gotten, here's the old, what they call a fuel vibrator. Um, the original one on this had this kind of a bracket already on it. Um, but we assume it's defective because it looks like it's already been tampered with. So we went ahead and ordered a new one. 
The new one, however, has a terminal uh, like so uh, on it. So I found a ring terminal, which I believe should be here. Um, and I've installed it there so that when we install the fuel vibrator, it will just go into there like so. Uh, and then it'll screw in with the last remaining screw right into that section that we were careful to put through the housing, that raised section of the house of the uh, of the gauge assembly. So uh, we'll just slide the, the module into there and then I'm just gonna put this screw in here. Quick tip while you're setting up all the uh, little bits and pieces, these are the bulb holders for the uh, original lighting. Um, we're gonna keep using these ones as well as the lead strips because it'll give a bit of backlight to the fuel gauge and so on. Um, you wanna clean these so you have the before uh, over here and then the after over there so Take some time, clean up the contacts on this because it'll make a big difference in, uh, in, the, uh, in the way that these will light up your lights and just a better contact you're at it, you might as well uh, get these cleaned up. So you want just a bit of scotch bright, a little bit of time and it gets you, gets you going. So now how to reassemble the front glass bezel parts. You have a glass piece with a rubber attached to it, glued to it. One side has a lip, one doesn't. That will be surround, or um, we will install this rubber next. Uh, it's a thicker rubber that goes around the glass part. Okay. And now what you will do is the section with a lip will go into the bezel face down so that that rubber will go into the channel of the bezel here and then the other rubber just goes around inside the bezel like so now you've got a flat inserted glass okay after that you have a flat rubber piece that goes on next at this point everything should be pretty much flush in the bezel all the way around if it's not then work your way around and you'll see it's pretty much flush with the edge over here and then the last piece is going to be the metal trim which is going to go face down into the bezel like so and it gives you an assembly like that once that's done we can then install it you will want to have these cutouts come and line up with these tabs so that there's one cutout on each side of the bezel they'll line up with the uh, mounting tabs for clearance now we're just gonna press press it in by hand all the way around until it clicks on to the speedometer I'm gonna now clean all this up prior to installing it and then uh, I will install that and show you how the finished product looks. Alright so we're done with the reassembly of the uh, of the faceplate or the uh, or the, um, the trim ring and the glass. Uh, once it's done you should have pretty much the same as what I have now. So we've pressed the ring on uh, I pre-assemble the ring with the glass, the rubber pieces, and the metal inner piece. And then you just line up your, your relief cuts that go to the tabs. And then you press it on evenly uh, on each side and work your way around. If you've bent up any area, you may want to bend it back to the proper shape before reinstalling this ring. Um, but that's pretty much it. And now we're good to go. I have the uh, LED uh, illumination on. We'll show you... Maybe we'll turn the lights off for a second and show you what that looks like. So that's the LED lighting. It's a little bit strong on the camera but 
it'll be very nice in the car if it's too bright we could always use the dimmer in the car or add a resistor to it So that's what you got hopefully this helps you in restoring your uh, speedometer should it be a replacement for one that stopped working or you want to fix yours or if you need to set up your uh, odometer reading if you like this video please subscribe if there's anything you would have done different comment and share it with other Volkswagen enthusiasts that could use this kind of a rebuild video. Thanks, see you on the next one. This was a Wolfhouse Motorworks presentation. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell.